Uh, first item on our agenda are the meeting minutes. Review and approve the meeting minutes for January 8th. <coughs> I'd like to entertain a motion. Yep. Second. All right. Uh, uh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, okay. The vendor payroll warrants are there in the packet to review. Are there any comments? Double. There's two of them. Uh, yeah. It's a double wide version. I'm still scrolling through them here. So hearing none, okay. Um, the third item on the agenda is a public comment. Um, is there anyone here from the public who has comments on an item that's not listed on the agenda? Sir? Uh, Net Fortune 152 Westbrook Road. I just want to express my disappointment that there are no poll hearing items on the agenda. Okay, thank you, sir. Just wait, there'll be more. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that we eliminate public comment from the agenda from here. Uh, well, maybe we can put that on an agenda for a future meeting. Okay, next item is old business. We're Zooming, all, we're gonna be out of here by like 6.15, I think. Uh, the old business, first item is to discuss and review plans for the reconstruction of sidewalks and the installation of crosswalks on Chestnut Plain Road. And I think I should turn it over to Brian to kind of summarize what has happened since our last meeting. Yep, since the last meeting, Keith and I met with Sarah Campbell, the engineer, to talk about the issues that the board had talked about and we had shared with her earlier what comments we had received from the public. And what you have in front of you is a revised plan. And it, it doesn't necessarily show some of the issues we talked about, so I'll, I'll highlight some of those. Mm -hmm. um, and Keith can jump in anytime he wants. Um, but we talked about crosswalks and the way that the plan is shown right now, um, it, the crosswalks would not be raised. Um, I'll run through the list and then we can get back to, okay. can get back to discussions about this. Um, and just very quickly, the recommendation is that there would be no uh, pedestrian activated flashing lights at the crosswalks. Um, and one of the other changes is that the most northerly crosswalk that was originally proposed really across from the center school has been pushed a little bit further south. Yep. You just see that on the plans. And that gives, there's a little bit more line, there's a little bit more distance between when you come around the corner and where the sidewalk location would be. And it kind of gets it away from that area where the traffic merges onto North Road and Christian Lane where we've all seen near mm -hmm. misses there <coughs> and really the last thing that we discussed we discussed a couple of things but the last the big thing that we had discussed was the issue of, of a, a sidewalk between the library and the town hall and the the concern of the engineer is that we're not sure we're, we're not certain that we could use the complete streets money for <coughs> something that doesn't comply with ADA, mm -hmm. um, but it, so <coughs> a recommendation is that that not be part of this project, but it could be something that's done really any time in the future. It's not a, it's not even, we don't really think it's going to be a huge deal to if, put in a right. gravel walk yeah. or something like that. It, it could be something that can be done at a later time if it's really deemed mm -hmm. necessary. Well, the one that's here now, will that remain or is that going to come out? With coming out. You know, come out and be low and see. And again, it's a situation of being ADA compliant. I know, but is it that bad it has to come out now? I mean, is it better it's, than nothing to leave it there? It, it would be safer as Loman C to be smoother. Okay. And less likely to have a tripping hazard. Yeah, the issue is there's a, there's a, a very large tree that's right up against the property line there. Yeah. And it has a lot of surface roots. So it narrows the distance that a possible sidewalk could go in. Yeah. I think probably less than four feet. Five. Yeah, it's, so less than it's right. right up against the property line and the surface routes pre currently present a tripping hazard and 
in yeah. terms of putting an asphalt <coughs> sidewalk on top of that, the durability of it is right. not great. Right. So. There's, yeah, there's lots of places on there. Where you're, yeah, because the trees. But again, that, that, there's nothing to say. We can't, at a later time, decide. Let's say it gets loam and seeded, and then it never can grow grass because people are walking there. We can then decide to go back and and put new fresh pavement on it if we want to. But it shouldn't be part of this at all because yeah. it's not ADA compliant, and that's what this is all about. Yeah. And if it's really a walking path, then this is all like if, 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 if. <coughs> you know, if we really just want a walking path, and we already have the parallel ADA compliant path, does it have to be paved? Could it be gravel? Could it be Possibly. something that um, would, that know, serves? It's tougher to maintain. If you're going to try to maintain it in the winter right. time, it shouldn't. It should be paved. So it, it's, right, and it could be something where we say, well, it's gravel. We're not going to maintain it in the winter. That's or an something option. like that. So right. we have a lot of options for doing that sort of parallel it's cut across it's short a short short piece that could be yeah. easily done later. And we can uh, settle yes. on that later maybe assess the need for it going forward. And that seems really reasonable to me. Um, Could I ask a question? <coughs> well, I don't know if Keith was done. For no, that. we don't. I'm no, sorry. I, I'll go on left. It, it's, 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 it harkens back to the, to the light situation. I, I like hearing about no flashing lights a lot. Will there be any kind of lighting at crosswalks i mean maybe we can put in the 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 the, the road reflectors of, of some kind because I, I i personally like the elimination of, of any obtrusive you know light that just makes it look like vegas yeah. well you have to put a sign there right the these crosswalk could be a sign the requirements would definitely have to have a, a pedestrian crossing sign right. prior to it yeah. No, that doesn't sign. mean that we we couldn't embed reflectors mm -hmm. like as you drive up and down 91 or 5 and 10. That's a that's a possibility that yes, we can do something of that nature that will delineate it better at nighttime. Right. Yeah. And then nothing during with your the day headlights. Right. It could be. You know, getting back to the the sign app, you know, the even the the very simple um, solar array sign that's going to put the project up over ten thousand dollars just to do those on the, and i my thoughts are at this point in time well it certainly by doing it gives it a better um, safety aspect but at the same point in time i don't feel that we are going to have the the pedestrian volume such as route 47 in sun North. And we're still much more rural street than that Main Street in, in Sunderland or, or 116 or even some of these other places in, in yeah. the cities are. We don't have, we're, we just don't have the pedestrians. Yeah. But if we're kind of going to back off on one aspect of making these uh, crosswalks visible, which is kind of the flashy lights, the Vegas lights as we'll call them now, um, there's something about just having the road painted that's not really that visible. In a place where there are some really nice, very visible crosswalks where uh, cars and trucks are forced to slow down, not because there's a 25 mile an hour road sign, but because of the street itself. Um, if I go down College Lane in Northampton, the crosswalks are raised, mm -hmm. and on the slanted part, it's painted with some white triangles right. so it's yeah. really easy to I see that. Yeah. that you've got a raised crosswalk up ahead now they don't have the thing where the sidewalk comes in and narrows it like they do in Florence um, but I remember at the complete streets meetings we talked about having some kind of traffic calming measures that go with the crosswalks and the two that I remember being mentioned are having the you know the uh, narrowing because narrowing will force cars and trucks to slow down uh, and they uh, uh, there's any number of road uh, names for them but traffic humps traffic it wouldn't have to be a hump it's a crosswalk 
it's actually very gentle, they, they but are. it's but it makes it that much more visible. And one, I think I, I, that's something I really wish we would want to pursue because it takes care of two things with one structure. One structure serves to both slow down the traffic, which is not going at the posted speed limit generally, um, and uh, it would make those crosswalks more visible as people approach them. The the biggest issue that we face with doing any raised Side, any raised crosswalks is drainage. Presently, the drainage works by running down the side of the road to each catch basin. Uh -huh. If you put a raised uh -huh. Uh -huh. crosswalk, now you have created a dam. The water can't go and it can't do what it's supposed to do. So we would have to do substantial drainage improvements or at a huge cost, which until oh, okay. that all gets calculated right so because um, it's not yeah. a situation where the water like in some places where i've seen them the water just is sheet drainage where it runs off the shoulder right and down into a ditch left and right off this the is the case where our, the drainage that we have the water has to go down the edge of the road into each catch basin and if you create a You've got now you've created a dam where the water is going to come down and get trapped. And the same would be true for when if it did for it, as opposed to raised. Same now concept. you have a pond, you can't unless there's the basin there, right? You've got to have you've got to create a means to deal with the water right. when okay. you when you dam it. Yeah, and I, and I, I agree with your comment there, Keith. And, and where these other locations are, they're in, in cities where I think it is the enclosed drainage. You've got curb and gutter the whole length, so you've got, yes. you got controlled drainage, and it, it does uh -huh. collect the water and a, and on again, the side of the again, road. Yeah, It would be one thing if some of our roads that just had sheet drainage, where, where the water just runs perpendicular way off the road into, into ditches. Right. We don't have ditches no. along that section of road. Um, so okay. that would be something that would be really a, a key could, factor that yeah. would have to be. Could there be a little bump on either side of the uh, crosswalk that doesn't block the drainage on the edges, but could help make it more visible by being painted and would maybe increase the, the safety given that we wouldn't have any flashing signs? I'd have, I'd have to look. You know, we'd have. To, I can consult with Sarah, the, our yeah. engineer, some more. I mean, I, I guess um, I'm not. I'm not so much worried about having them be so big and steep no, that you have to like yeah. really uh, like and, you're going to hurt your axles or something. I, you know, I, but just that little bit makes it more visible if you paint it. I also am in the process of trying to get more information from some of the towns as to the noise level afterwards. Um, mm -hmm. Even when there's even when the subtle. Mm -hmm bumps are put in, you have vehicles that, not necessarily like big trailer trucks, but even if you have a car that's pulling a, like a landscaping trailer, anything that's loose, every time those vehicles go over and shake, rattle and roll. And a lot of times, even if you live near a house, well, think of it, think of it similar to the railroad tracks, or think of it similar to, to an expansion joint on a bridge. Every time those vehicles go over, mm -hmm. some, pavement that's a little change in elevation it's going to shake rattle and roll whatever's on that vehicle huh. um, so that in many cases there are vehicles that could be obeying the speed limit are going to make noise mm -hmm. which could be right. and, uh, and so I'm trying to find out any information which I just started looking into when okay. I get back to work as far as I also want to make sure if we were to put these in that we're not going to say, geez, we should have never done that. I, I would like uh, to yeah, see yeah. if I can get some information from some other communities saying that they've gotten no complaints afterwards or are they getting complaints afterwards for noise? So, so yeah. I'd like to look into that a little bit more also. Could you explain what there's a comment here, crosswalks with tactical pads, what, what is that? Is That's that ADA compliance. So then the those, pads on the side those are the, the yellow, yellow the yellow they're made out of rubber and so that's for blind people so they they know when they're coming to right. the crosswalk okay but they'll be on the side of the road or it's on the road in, itself in, 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 the, the, road? No. in the in the transition from the pavement 
right. from the street to the sidewalk. They're in the transition. Okay, what's going to be on the road then? Are you painting? Just the painting a crosswalk. What which is the configuration? MUTC. The you know the federal yes. standard as right. far as what's supposed to be there would okay. be the the white lines with the hashes on it. Paint, basically painted lines on there. Correct. Um, but it's still going back to Jonathan's idea. They still could easily put the embedded. But reflectors, raised, but the embedded <coughs> reflectors, as I said, if you, when you drive down right now, what they they have them to give you more guidance on the center line, especially very helpful on a rainy night. Yeah. Well, something like that could possibly be done mm -hmm. to depict that crosswalk right. as you're coming up to it in the okay. middle of the night. Yeah, because I guess I, I, I feel like we need to replace the flashing lights with something if we're going to um, kind of back off on that particular um, safety element of making these crosswalks more visible, then we need to maybe put in some other feature that's going to help increase the visibility. One other aspect of this um, that I feel and I've talked to Brian about, since we're doing changes to the parking and things like this, and since it's the plan to repave Chestnut Plain at the same time through this section, if, if we need to, and we're not quite, we don't have that final decision made, we can leave the, the crosswalk section out, out of the complete street, and I can do it in the chapter 90 portion of it so that we can get that I just don't want this to hold us up as far as getting out for advertising. Which well, one are you talking about? I'm talking if if we if we're still not sure if we want to put in raised crosswalks or or what I'm saying that oh. portion could be done under the chapter 90, the paving part of that of the crosswalk I can do under the when I pave the, the road. It, there's no opportunity cost there then, I mean, because you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to pay that pave that anyway. Nothing's gonna not happen. Yeah. Correct. Okay. The only thing that would need to be known is the contractor is going to need to know at what elevation the sidewalk is coming in to the crosswalk. So, but in the meantime, if we need to pull that little bit out of this contract so we can get it out to bid, it, we can do that and and take care of it at a later time. But Joyce, do you have an issue with reflectors? Do you think that? Satisfies the safety issue. I, I'm well. I, I'm agnostic on oh, reflect, oh, reflectors. Um, I think reflectors would be a good idea. If that, if we can't have a can't have Vegas lights, then maybe reflectors are a good substitute for kind of a community like ours yeah. with the traffic like ours. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, oh, would you, oh, yes, ma'am. Make a few comments. Um, uh, Don Wilder, 184 Chestnut Plain Road. Um, on a couple of things. Um, first of all, Keith's absolutely, um, not surprisingly, right about the way the water flows. And if you ever, actually, one of the best part about the Conway School study was their topographical maps, and they they really make that point very, very clearly. Um, when we had open meetings about town center, there was a, a, I would say, unanimous, a great outcry against raised speed bumps. Now, part of the problem is what people think of as raised speed bumps are the terrible things that, you know, take your muffler off the car. So that was without, you know, animations or really thinking things through. Um, but it was, a, it was very strongly held. So I would just suggest that if, if you end up leaning in that direction, I think it would be a good idea to have another open meeting because there was nothing about the crosswalks except the location at the meeting that Brian and, and Keith had in the fall. Yeah. Um, Getting rid of the flashing lights is great, right? Well, maybe, but I know it is great. It is great. But I want to say something else about safety, yeah. and I say this actually uh, not so much on the basis of consultation with others, but my own recent experience. Um, uh, we were crossing from Green Street over to the Smith College parking garage a couple of nights ago. You know, eight thirty, nine o'clock at night has well painted crosswalk, not no raised. lights at all. Not raised. 
and not raised. It's no, just the paint, raised. just the paint, and it took two, you know, substantial size adults standing in the road doing this to get anyone to slow down. I mean, it, it, it's, I'm worried about that, and I wondered, I'm depressed about what Keith said about cost, I wondered, there are certainly crosswalks that have lights that have small solar panels on the top, and they don't blink. You just push the button and the light goes on so that it you know, catches driver's attention. And I wondered if we should be looking into any alternatives of that sort that wouldn't take wiring, that wouldn't be shining. I mean, we've finally gotten rid of the library's spotlight shining into everybody's front lawns. You know, didn't, wouldn't do anything like that, but would just, you know, if we're gonna have the crosswalks, we want them to work for people. And, and we also wanna remember that people are crossing from sidewalk to sidewalk and the sidewalks won't be lit because we don't have any money for for appropriate downward fit, well, for any lighting. Um, so, we, I mean, we want them to, to be functional. So the, car, the, the cars will not be driving on the sidewalk. You're in much less danger no, on that sidewalk. No, but right? I, no I understand that. Yeah. That was my point. My point is that people need to be walking in a safe situation. Yeah. Um, so you're going to, I mean, I think continuing to talk about it and looking at more, doing exactly what um, Keith is doing is really the right thing to do. I mean, we know everything we don't want. I would just say one other thing about moving the sidewalk, and this is um, at the, the one by the center school. If you are walking, and I am not the only person who walks from Chestnut Plain Road onto North Street or onto Christian Lane or onto Swamp Road, and you're coming south, the way you do that is you come across the bridge and you cross and you walk along the uh, west edge of the triangle. If the crosswalk doesn't, is not adjacent to that point, then you're, I mean, this, we're doing this for pedestrians, then the pedestrian is standing there on the island having to decide what to do. So I would just urge you not to move it too far away from the edge of the triangle. Or we have to do something that gets people safely across that bridge. I mean, because people ought to be walking against traffic, especially there. Not, I mean, you walk. I walk with your dogs and your kids. You know, and, yeah. and um, you've got to do it. That's the way you go. And you, you know. So I'm, I'm a little concerned about moving it far away from the edge of the triangle. Just say two things about the. Uh, Lighting crosswalk. I, I think we've got to pay attention to what the MUTCD has to say about lighting, and whether you can do solar or the, the yeah. height of it and it can what's be. required. Okay. And and the other thing, if we should ever go that route, then we're going to need to maintain them in the winter. We're going to have to talk about snow removal in the winter. Otherwise, why go through this expense and and uh, and and the, the expense and, and installation of, of these. Uh, lights or signs or whatever you're going to put up there if you can't use them in the winter. I mean, are we going to shut them down for three months? Uh, there needs to be some, some, some thought. We haven't got to that point yet, I guess, of whether who's going to maintain these sidewalks. Yeah, in I winter. mean, the, the, so. the, solar, the solar array is, is mounted at an angle to the point where in a readily amount of time afterwards it should clear itself the snow should clear itself well I'm not, I'm not snow on the solar on a panel but on, on the sidewalk yeah the okay well I mean the, the, the maintenance is a whole other yeah, maintenance is a whole other issue, issue but, that, but that still is I guess that's something to consider if we're going to go through with, with putting some kind of lights or something and that's there. additional I mean, expense to do that we need to think about Maintaining it. Who's going to maintain the sidewalk itself? Yes, and, and I'm at. Right. I mean, that's might as well transition into that because that's one of the things that I'm having to question the board is we've got to make a decision. We're at budget season, mm -hmm. yeah. and a yeah. decision needs to be made how and if they're going to be maintained in winter, and we can take the option of doing no maintenance, but in the comments that we received, it seemed pretty overwhelmingly people wanting it maintained. So then if you're gonna have it maintained, then you have a choice of either 
the town maintains it at the town's expense or you create a bylaw saying that the, the residents have to do it. And at this point in time, I wouldn't recommend that because it's not, um, it's not something that I think it would be, like in many cases, cities have miles and miles of sidewalks, so it's not a burden on just a few people. Mm -hmm. If we create that kind of a bylaw, that puts a big burden on just a few of the residents in the town. So it would be my recommendation that if they're going to be maintained, that to start with, I would recommend that we hire a contract or do contract services for it. Um, do we, uh, does the town own equipment that can clear sidewalks? No. Okay. Like, do any towns around here have yes. equipment that we could borrow? We could do uh, a share agreement, a cost share agreement? I don't see how you can do that. Um, in that aspect, I mean, you right close, close by yeah, um, Sunderland and Deerfield, and again, if that was one of those scenarios, then they would they would only have one and they'd be sharing it what are those, with themselves. What, are the, what, what, are, what do those cost? You're looking at spoiling a hundred, a little over a hundred thousand dollars for what the municipalities purchased for a municipal type thing. Um, do you have any test those you can get for that? You could get like a couple so, of Tesla police cars for that. Well, I guess because it is budget season. He's not going to make you that. And I don't know what the total miles is. Were I, I forget what the total mileage mileage is of this. A thousand feet on each side. You're but right what's the cost going to be for a, for a, I, a, a landscaper to come I in and do this? I would recommend that we that like something that Brian and I could do pretty quick is come up with a an estimate from contract wise to have them at least snow blow it and then that brings us to the second aspect what are we going to do when it comes to treating for being slippery I certainly don't you know that the chlorides that's one of the worst we have to salt the, the road but the chlorides is one of the worst things for the maple trees um, and so here we are thinking all right if we are going to go out and put any type of chlorides on the on the sidewalks that's even introducing more detriment to to our maple trees so uh, i'm not sure how you know we could try to do a a straight sand which would at least mm -hmm. cure slippery ice things of that nature um, so there's possibility of doing that but again I'm not really in favor of wanting to start putting more, whether it be, you know, regular salt or you try to do calcium chloride or potassium chloride. There's all, any of these, any of these chlorides are what attack the maple trees. Can I ask you to think more, about, I know you, you will, but think more about the, the cost of, of either your department doing it or contracting, give us some information on what it would cost, buying equipment yep. and, we can, and your can time and the budget, you know, and all that. I think yep. I like to see some hard numbers, facts that are kind of reasonable rather than just guessing what it would be, I, so. Why don't I have something for the next board meeting? Yeah. On that. Okay. Because if you, it's gonna be well into four figures every winter. A normal winter. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it could be. Yeah. yeah, and and so it doesn't take too many four-figure winters to offset the capital cost of buying one of these pieces of equipment. And I, I understand. That's and at least we control the cost, as opposed to the the contractor. We don't control that cost. Pay prevailing wage. And, and you may want to consider the uh, either coordinating or, or doing what we're doing with the uh, town hall and, and Spike's out post office that contract that whether if, be, if you were to yes, do it would that be also combined with yours? At that point in time or, or if different? It should yeah. be combined. Combined, yeah. Correct. Yeah. And, and how much are we to streamline? Say? That'll streamline right. the two things together. Right. Right. Yes. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, before we leave this, 
could you explain some of what's happening from the Waitley end? You sure. got some crosswalks here. I, the, you know, one of the, the big outcomes of the public hearing we had was definitely the, the proposed location of the crosswalk got moved a little bit. Certainly when people are going to want to walk across, if, if they parking at the, if there's parking at the Whaley Inn and walking across to the town hall, or if there's parking at the town hall, walking to the Whaley Inn, we want the crosswalk to be right where it's best. And, and that's the present location that we have here now. So that is definitely um, the best location for the crosswalk there. Um, other things that are happening is the southerly entrance to the Whaley Inn will be terminated. It will no longer be an entrance there. Um, and there's also one, two, two parallel spots that will be on Haydenville Road, two parallel parking locations there. And depending on how the inn configures the handicap spots, there'll be a total of 23 or 24 spaces there, which is a little net increase. Was it what? Do you remember the number, Brian? I think 22? we counted between 22 and 24, yeah, depending so on how people park. We're actually gaining a little bit there. Um, one of the things that needs to be done in the real near future also is this board, Brian and myself, we need to sit down with the Waitley Inn and discuss the, the cost factor. There's things that that are happening as a result of us doing this. There's also betterment from the the inn is looking at a betterment situation because they're going to get get something out of this. So it it needs to be um, we need to come up with some type of a an agreement on how things are getting paid for um, because it certainly is not something that the town should be responsible for the whole thing. But you're putting in a, it looks like a six foot walk at the edge of the parking lot, right? Correct. It's not that, there today. That that is pretty much where the where that remains of that island are. It's gonna be wider. It's gonna be wider than what's there. And it's gonna be six foot so that that will create also when when people pull up to it on the inside of the parking lot and if their tires pull up to it and there's still a little bit of overhang of their vehicle, that extra foot will still provide the five foot of, um, of sidewalk. So that's why it says six foot there. Okay. Um, okay. And in front of the library, are you, you're proposing uh, parking along Chestnut Plain? Correct. The, the picture that's depicted now has them at parallel and actually, I mean at, yeah, yeah well, like perpendicular, perpendicular, I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the engineer, Brian and I, we went, we talked about it and when you do the math on diagonal, because of the skews you actually are making, um, it, it messes up the crosswalk drastically. You lose a yeah, lot of parking, skews. you lose a lot of parking there. And also, we're taking into account that one of the big um, requests was that we attempt to not have parking in front of the private residence on two, 200. And so by doing the, the perpendicular, it allows access to park from both directions, whereas the diagonal would only allow it from one and gives us the, the maximum amount of spaces for the amount of land that's going to be used. The only thing I would say is with, with the uh, perpendicular, you need two, you need both lanes of, of Christian, of uh, Chestnut Plain to access any, the parking spot. Whereas if you had a diagonal, well, picking one direction, you're only <coughs> going to be into one lane supposedly. And, and thinking more about what downtown areas have, they're more diagonal because you, you don't disrupt 
both lanes of traffic, both directions. You're only disrupting one lane, one direction of traffic. Where you see more perpendicular like this is in parking lots where you don't have a lot of through traffic. Now, depending on how much through traffic we get, I guess, and hours are used, it may not be, may not be an issue, but, but I think we need to look at that because you're going to, people pulling in and out are going to have to wait for traffic to stop in both directions because you need that distance to get in and out. Whereas at an angle, uh, you'd only be needing it hopefully in one lane. So, yeah, you are, you are losing you're pointing some. Out there's disadvantages and advantages. Right. You right. are losing some some parking spaces, but I guess you got to consider that. I'm a big believer that let's not kid ourselves about the traffic flow capacity yeah. of the town. There are only going to be a few times in any given month, year, that has significant traffic flow. And also, let's not kid ourselves that even with diagonal, if, if, if the diagonal is facing front end north, say, just hypothetically, let's not, if somebody has to go south, they're going to back out into the southbound lane. They're not going to say, oh, I've got to go north before I find a legal U-turn. They're just not going to do it. Right. Oh, they go into the Whitley Inn. No, they, they won't. They're just they're going to back out and they're going to take that, whatever the degree angle is. The quickest way. Yeah. Because yeah. because again, it's not that much traffic. Yep. That's about all I have to report on lease for tonight. Um, Brian and I will keep working with Sarah Campbell and we'll get this keep okay. taking a yeah, step forward. We'll have more information monetary wise for maintenance for the next meeting. Okay. Okay, good. And a decision has to get made, it sounds like, on a... Like, we can't be doing this in six weeks. Right. I mean, our our hope is to, is to put it out for a bit, you know, as soon as possible, so mm -hmm. we can get on the right. contractor schedule. Just to summarize what, what we're going to... What we're going to be research... I guess researching is... We, we wanted to research crosswalks, um, elevated or not, um, whether there whether there's, creates noise issues, Mm -hmm. um, we're also looking at, at some type of reflectors embedded to, to see what's to see what's out there, and also the issue of um, winter maintenance um, cost estimates for that in terms of the different alternative ways that we could maintain the sidewalks. Is is the idea of well, I get I'll hold that question. I was going to ask about the idea of a bylaw. It would have to be pretty. Um, pretty costly. I guess that feeling fair statement. Right. <clears throat> what well, should we be like, researching? What if we decided for? tonight? Yeah, we want a bylaw. Is there really even time to do that between now and town meeting? Um, I think we. I I think we could. It would probably be pretty much boilerplate. You can call for another community. Would be my guess. As far as maintenance, me. No, I guess yeah for, <coughs> for like residents. To, I think that. Would be Language. What's your schedule for having all this done? Well, at the moment, without any extensions, June 30th. Everything completed? Okay. <coughs> Does that mean the construction is going to be taking place during the Memorial Day activities? Good chance of it, yeah. So we should plan accordingly. Well, as time goes on, we, we can, we'll know more of the timing. Right. I mean, these are really dedicated workers. They're going to work right through Memorial Day weekend. I no, I don't mean in terms of timing. I mean in terms of just the construction yeah. element of yeah. We'll yeah. make sure it's cleaned up. Yeah. Right. It's something we'll have to work on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we did it for the town hall. We worked yeah. around it. So. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Did anybody else have a comment from the public here? Okay. All right, so I'll on to the next item. Um, on your own business to discuss whether to apply for assistance from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments District's Local Technical Assistance Program. And that, so I'm going to bring that back up to the front here of my screen. Um, and I'll turn it back to Brian. Sure, so. Good summary ready. We talked about this last, uh, we talked about this at the last meeting as well. And. I think we don't need to go into what the mm. MTA program is, right? We had talked about really the, the top four things that, that the board had talked about was housing planning and, um, mm. related to some type of 
um, housing studies or the small town housing group um, that's going on. EV charging stations, aging and <coughs> dementia friendly community planning in brownfields. So what, what FERCOG is asking us to Not do Not open is, space? That wasn't one of the top four, no. But then would that eliminate our ability to apply for that $10,000 assistance? Um, no. It was a, well, so in terms of the, in terms of doing the open space and recreation plan, there's potentially, well, you might know more about the CPC votes than I, but um, there was a request for $10,000 in CPA funds. Right. And then there was the request through um, the uh, conservation assistance for small communities grant. Which would be separate from this. Which is separate from that. And yeah. they're not going to look negatively on that request if we're punting this request? I wouldn't think so. Okay. That's fine. I just wanted to... Um, yep. Well, the, and those were just the top four that, that were talked about. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we... Well, what FERCOC is asking for is that we, um, on the last page, is that we prioritize our top three. Yeah. Um, we have an email from Catherine. Yeah. Um, who's chair of the housing committee um, yeah. asking that you give some consideration to housing planning yeah. um, and just to add to that Fred and I had talked about this a little bit um, the amounts so currently we have $118,000 in the Whitley Affordable Housing Trust which is not being which is not being used and we also have and this is including um, FY20 future CPA revenue that's being projected, but there'll be an additional $39,000. That's mm -hmm. so all of that amount of those funds need to be spent on uh, yeah. community, what's called community housing under this under the CPA. So yeah. um, those funds have been sitting for a while, um, and there hasn't been a lot of movement. Right. So I think that's part of. But part it's of like the money has grown to a point where you could actually do something too. Right. Well, and doing affordable housing projects and construction is quite expensive in the millions of dollars. That would maybe fund a really small project by doing a down payment program for two houses or something, which is a potential, and we've talked about that on and off over the years. But if we want to actually take control and try to work on managing our own type of housing project, this would be nice to be able to work towards pre-development and then development with an area nonprofit to actually build something that can come to our specifications. But if we don't do the head, the planning ahead of time, when we get to the pre-development phase, our town will have no control over what happens. And so I feel like if we lay the groundwork, do a survey, see what people's interests are, I have a feeling we can kind of guess based on our demographics what we might ascertain our needs to be. Um, but if we can go through those initial motions and maybe update what we had talked about, I found some old master plan stuff that I think never got adopted. We can sort of raise the bar with what we've said officially on our town documents that we're interested in doing. It will help go a long way so that when we get a nonprofit partner, we can actually get something done that would be meaningful for our town instead of having someone come in and try to shove something that they want you know, down our throat. I'd like to be able to kind of be in charge of it from the beginning. And I think to add to that, uh, our governor mentioned something at our conference last week in Boston about an initiative for housing. Uh, I don't you know, it's either low income or senior housing, but initiative he's looking at, so there may be money available for activities related to that as well coming in the future. And if we have a plan in place and, and know what we want to do, we'd be in a better position to apply if money comes available for that. We want to be careful about what the governor's housing plans because it tends to be focused on the eastern part of the state's need for significant amounts of housing. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's not, housing, yeah. it, it's geographically kind of, and, and I'm, not, I'm not surprised. I mean, the, the population's there, but it, the, the program's probably not going to be taking into account the realities of, of, of rural affordable housing. There's, one, there's a program that's state created kind of in conjunction with that rural policy planning startup that has happened over the last three or four years. Yeah. 
it's the ha small towns housing choice pro it's um it's kind of a mini version of a one stop w in a way where we could get a development package together certainly no small group of volunteers is going to be able to prepare an application for something like that nor do any of us have the skills to do pre-development work really um to get along that line but i'm familiar enough with the funding and the requirements that I can really, over time, help guide someone in at Franklin County. Their planners can help, and hopefully eventually um, the Housing and Redevelopment Authority will get itself to a position again where they're able to provide support in this area. I've been like watching their minutes. I haven't really been in touch with them, but um, I, that will take a little while before we can get some help, but it could be that other community housing agencies are willing to provide a little support in that area, too. We've also been discussing in, informally, but seriously, between adjacent communities, surrounding communities, the concept of, of sharing housing demand, yeah. so that if, if Waitley doesn't have the ideal locations because right. there are no services, could then, exchange money for housing preferences. Exactly. So our, yeah. our housing re requirements yeah. would be geographically in a Sunderland or a Deerfield. A few and, years ago, I had a long conversation with Rebecca Frawley, who's one of the higher ups at DHCD in the housing area, back when I was employed in this industry. And she talked about, at that point, there hadn't been any um, tax credit projects that crossed municipalities and she said she would really love to work with us being my former employer on doing something like that but we didn't feel at that time like we had a project or a bandwidth I don't think that anything like that's gone forward but that regional program regionalization program where they're like looking for people to submit innovative ideas if if that's something that gets traction over the next couple of years I'd be willing to take part in some of the writing and, and guiding in how that would work. There are tax credits and crossing municipal boundaries because the, there are so many zoning specific things that happen would be, I think, pretty complicated. Um, but I don't think that it means it's out of the question. I'd be happy to do something like a larger scale Sunderland project in another one of these communities where we would be able to get know at least some of our residents will get preferences and if well, we, we can't do anything here. Having that kind of housing, which helps us get money for yeah. I guess so some of the other two towns we would we would coordinate with did express some interest at our meeting the other day okay. of sharing funds and even using CPA funds that they have, okay. realizing they don't have enough for doing something say substantial or meaningful, but right. the three towns okay. together okay, so so, so Brian, the four, Sunderland. Sunderland and Deerfield, yes. The Brian, the four, it was, it, it was housing, it was brownfields, it was EV, and what was the fourth? Aging in place. Aging in place. Dementia, Dementia. 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 Yeah. I, I would, not that I want to kill discussion, but I, I'm going to suggest that we consider doing housing, brownfield, or brown housing, uh, aging in place, and brownfield, because I think EV we can do on our own. I, I don't think that's as big a lift as we think it's going to be. I may be, that may be wishful thinking, but I think that, I think those other three require a lot more regional collaboration, and I, and I think we can do, as important as it is, I think we can do EV without that, those DLTA funds. That would be my, Two cents. I, I, I initially agree with what you're saying, Jonathan. I, I agree with that priority: housing, aging in place, and uh, brownfields. brownfields. And I love that housing wants to actually do this so that we have a partner. In We're likely to only get funded for one thing right. on this anyway. It's not, not a heck of a lot of money. We could, and we yeah, saw we how responsive they were on EVs last time. We could get two potentially, couldn't yes, we, Bob? <laughs> yeah. Brian, I, I yeah, I'm not restricted at one. No, I, I no, I think likely is what I said. It's a, yeah, I it's, said likely. It's not. It's not a great amount of money. That no. <laughs> Those would be my three. Well, I would reluctantly. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, I would reluctantly go along with that because it sounds like if you think we can do it another way, you support us doing it another way when we find that opportunity, which 
I don't know where it's going to be, but the budget season is coming up. So, okay. Yeah. Can you have a, you have a comment out here? Question. Oh, sure. Chris. It would be nice to see some type of senior housing. I think that's important. Hatfield has catwalk. I know it takes a lot of money to do that, but that yeah. would be very nice. EV chargers, you might want to check with your local electric utility. We, we have, we have okay. all of that. Yes. Yeah, good, good. Yes. A lot of balls um, in the air on that. Yes, there. Yes, that's. Uh, Just making sure you're aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. I, th I think you're right. Ed housing has to be a. a, a it's, it's come. It keeps coming back. We need to. So, I mean, I don't mind putting housing as our number one if they put it in numerical order over there. Um, that's to me is. Uh, it's important, and it's because our, our neighbors are wanting to be involved in it too. Um, whether it's senior uh, and low income or mix, or I would leave that to the housing committee. Sure. But I think they are definitely aware of and our needs the for. Yes, they're that definitely was my aware. Code for saying I think our demographics would be yada yada because <laughs> well, if I was going to really say that strongly, it would not necessarily mesh with the Baker administration's family housing priority. But I would just say that I think if we work with Franklin County and we're able to do a survey and assess the needs of our current local residents, it would lend us to the answer that I don't even need to speak of, that that is a need in our town and all of our surrounding towns and in fact our entire county because the demographics and all that work has really been done. So if we get that and we get a little support and potentially work with Deerfield, Sunderland, and I, I would say Conway because I've been going to the that small town, <coughs> to a small town housing working group meetings and Conway has been there and has already engaged for COG to work with them on how to use their CPA money, which they have a lot as well, way more than us. So I think there's definitely potential to do something together or one of the things that they're working on themselves is writing a grant to potentially have a housing, part-time housing person whose job it would be would be to serve sort of four to six of the small under 5,000 Franklin County towns to try to work on developing ways that we can support affordable housing of, of any type because a, a lot of really small towns are in the same position where we're getting this money but the effort involved in getting to an actual construction project funded by multiple state uses and federal uses is kind of monumental and way more than a town like this can do without support and here in Franklin County. Uh, one last thing for relief housing. I guess I'd like to put a plug in for uh, people are interested in joining the housing committee. We have four people now. Uh, we'd welcome one or two more. We asked a while ago, but it was more for, I guess, people that had experience in housing. I think we'd be open to anybody that's interested in the housing in, in the town here to uh, come join the committee. Uh, we meet probably once a month. Uh, there is. Uh, mission statement on our website if you want to know more about what the housing committee does go to the whaley.org website and look under housing committee so uh, appreciate anybody that's interested in viewing the, the video here so so do you guys want, do yeah, want do we to need a vote number, yeah, do you want to do number two as aging in place and three as brownfields I'm agnostic sure. on that. Con consistency, is, sure. you know, it's sort okay. of a trend. Yeah. It, it trends from housing to aging. Right. So I'm hearing a motion. Uh, I'm making that motion. Let housing be our sure. first uh, priority. Let aging in place and. Um, uh, there's another word tagged on there. Um, like, uh, not all. Not all. Dementia. Members. Dementia. Dementia. Dementia friendly, friendly community, planning. community planning. That's the second, um, and then brownfields for the third. Okay, I'll second the motion. All in favor? Yep. Bye. Bye. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. Thanks, Captain. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Remember, you bargained for it. Yeah, I know. I asked for it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, next item is to discuss status of the required improvements to Club Castaway and for the board to review the operation of the establishment under the terms of the variance grant on August 8th, 2018. So, I, well, I'll give them a little introduction sure. real quick where we are and let them know that. Uh, so, Jim was not able to come at the last minute. He had to attend to something at home. 
Okay. Um, so you have the you have his summary that he normally sends mm -hmm. with the copy of the police yeah. detail logs. Um, really, just to summarize it, well, I'll read quickly. There's only three sentences yeah. here. He said, uh, "I have continued to speak with Mark DeGiacomi, security consultant, on a regular basis. There was nothing of any importance to report regarding the police detail logs 12 19 19 to 11 2020, and he did not report any issues to me." There have been no police calls for service since opening day. Police detail invoices have been paid through December. And you have copies of the logs here. Um, and there's really not much to report. Um, but he apologizes for this meeting. Okay. So it sounds like, I mean, that's all good news. Yeah. I think so. I don't know. Yeah, sure. So from our end, uh, we opened October 28th, 29th. Uh, you guys know. You guys are more up to date than I am probably as far as physically being here. Good to see everyone again. Um, so we have detail. They've staffed it every single day that we agreed on. So there hasn't been a staffing issue. Uh, on top of that, I think almost every day we've had two additional security inside. It's basically overstaffed. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's kind of the context of it. Um, no issues of any sort. I mean, I guess the chief backs that up. Uh, we've been on top of it. The camera system's in. Walls 85% done. They're saying Friday it will be complete. Um, I guess we have one more month of the reviews, so by then it will be done. Um, when it gets done, we'll call the building inspector, Mr. Roberts, mm -hmm. to come in. He'll sign off, and then at that point, I would have completed what you guys wanted. Do you anticipate that he'll be able to come review on Friday when it's done, or is that going to take a couple of days? We won't open until he reviews. Right, um, I get that. Yeah, so probably not. Friday's the worst day to have an inspector come for anything. From what I know, I don't know him very well. He's actually very on point and very responsive. Uh, we'll you just never know. You may, if you say, hey, we're hoping to be done. Yeah, you know, we have to clean. It, it's just clean. Like, we're, not gonna, we're not going to open this yeah. weekend, so just so you guys know. We're gonna finish, we're gonna call him, he's gonna come. He's very happy with everything. It's not really a rush like, at this point. Clean it, have, you know, there's just a transition from construction to open. Mm -hmm. The guys are going in, like, they gotta use the bathroom, you know, it's, yeah. it's unavoidable. Do you enjoy work inside as well? Uh, changing the carpet, painting, um, and we remove the stage. Back. No. The back. There was a tiny stage in the back. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Another main one. Yeah. Just a bunch of space. Okay. Well, I sympathize. I just had carpet put in my house too. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, not as easy. No, and they track. Like we weren't going to replace all of it for budget reasons, and now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but from our end, it's all been very smooth. The chief staffed everything. Hopefully, you guys are happy. I know it's been a long road. But hopefully the proof is in the pudding that we've been. Nick, I think, has missed a total of three days since we opened, so we're doing our part. Yeah, as I've said, I, I, I told Nick, I, you guys have done exactly, in terms of ops, Yeah, you, you've done what we asked. And I, yeah. I, I appreciate you. The employees are happy. We're doing everything right that basically nobody in the state does correctly, so it's happening. Tough business but we want to keep the neighbors happy. As far as I know, no neighbor complaints. I don't know if they'd call you guys or the police, but they haven't been calling the police, they haven't been calling us, so. They haven't been calling me, so. Yeah, yeah and, and I was glad, I guess I'm glad in the overall <coughs> scheme of things here that you you put together a schedule, a process of completing everything. I think Nick was, uh, earlier meetings gave us something that I think was very useful. It gave, I think that was, Helped us uh, confirm and, and support what you're what you're doing. I, I think so. That was a good effort to do that. Uh, just it's okay. I guess we're going to have one more meeting right for the fourth month. Mm -hmm. That'll be February. We're going to look to have the variance extended for the detail, just to give you guys a heads up so you're not surprised by it. The way we left it is, we're going to basically the way it was structured is there's a variance mm -hmm. with a probationary period where we come in every uh, month yeah. and during that probationary period the police are there 
So we're going to look for variants to not have, not have to have them. We're going to use them, but there's just some days where it's like a snowstorm, and we want to have the flexibility of not having to have. So you them. think you'll continue with a with a police? Well, program. definitely. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. We actually like. Lines, it. The truth is, we like it. Yeah. It's just one. It's just very expensive. So there's just some days where it doesn't make practical sense for them to be there. But operationally, we like it, and that's why it's been working. But just to give you, so no one's surprised, I want to tell you guys a month in advance, so you can contemplate in your heads. Um, but the requirement's burdensome, but at the same time, we use it, and there is a benefit to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess I would, I would say I'd be interested in Kind of what your criteria would be for you say you you like it and you want to use it like under what conditions would you want to use it or would you want to go to that expense to use it as opposed to when you're so like a friday night Friday, Saturday. when it's busy mm -hmm. if we know it's busy especially mm -hmm. right i mean right. you know so for context detail is about two and a half times a regular security guard and we outsource security. Right. So it's right. about triple if we hired security directly. Right, but if you wait until the night before to know what the weather forecast is. No, but we, pro I mean, there's advertising that happens, and, and so okay. there's just certain days that we know in advance are gonna be better than others. Okay, because like, you had mentioned the weather, and I'm not sure that police details can necessarily be scheduled. Uh, with my experience, they can. You know, I mean, we'll, we know three days before there's a snowstorm coming. Right. We, we just yeah. do. It. They may be so you know, possible, a snowstorm may be a bad example. Yeah. But just in general, as the operator, we kind of want the flexibility yeah. of yeah. using our judgment. We feel like right. it's going to be really crazy. We have some special events planned to right. give ample notice to get it I guess I, I, I'd like a little bit more information about what kind yeah. of... It's just that there's 20 people in there. No, no. I, when yeah. we come back, yeah. I'm going to be looking okay. at what you have to say yep. about when it is you would still be wanting to have police there and when it is, I mean, voluntarily, if that were to, to pass. Do we know if the police ever just sat on the lot at all there, like say on a Thursday night at all, do it like without us paying? Like we know the what? former owner said that sometimes they used to just park the car on a Thursday night or so, just and sit there. So just, just we curious. Have to ask the police. Yeah. I would, I would. Yeah, so they said that they, they would sit there anyway. And we, <laughs> Well, no, because just because it's in the, they have to sit somewhere. Right. So where was the, the, the uh, probably a month ago maybe there was a, a snowstorm, and for whatever reason I was driving kids all over the place in the middle of the snowstorm, and because of where I was driving, I drove past castaways probably six times during the snowstorm in the span of two hours, and the Waitley police, I mean it was closed and it was you know and but that's where they were sitting. It's a good intersection to stay at and station real, realistically, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. It's probably one of the bigger lots that sometimes has nobody in it. Right. So, right. And, so and it's late. And, and they know, yeah. and what are we gonna say? They know we're not gonna say, hey, get off our property. Right, you can't just go to a regular residence property and leave your car there. So, it's good in that regard. So I do know that they, they do, they do, they do say They do sometimes, yeah. Yeah. So, George, okay. point taken. Okay. And we'll have, you know. We, we just try to be transparent with everything. Okay. Like I said, it's been a long run, but in general, I will hopefully you see we've kind of, everything we've said is what happened. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. Thank you, guys. Good month. All righty. Okay. okay. We're on to new business. Um, first one, uh, item may end up getting tabled. It says yes, discuss police department staffing requests and police department budget, but uh, Jim couldn't be here tonight, so that'll have to go to our next meeting. Yep. Um, we need to declare some supplies surplus um, to be consistent with our bylaws. And these are things from departments where the departments themselves have said, yes, we think this is surplus. Yeah. <coughs> I think I've got a list in it here. There's a list, yeah. Washing lights, and we'll, sign blanks, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what does this mean? These will be advertised or? We usually put them on municipal which is an online okay. municipal auction and people bid and. Is, is there anything in the, uh, in the center school that <coughs> could add to this? Uh, 
um, that he looked at that? I don't think that there's, I mean, we could, we can really do this any time. Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. If there's stuff there that we need to yeah. close up. I mean, if we don't think the stuff has much value, you can always dispose yeah. of it or recycle it too. So. Okay. Well, I would entertain a motion to. Uh, yeah, you got it. Declare these in surplus. Second. And there's two on the other, the library has oh. air conditioning, dehumidifier. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. okay. As a, uh, the, all in favor? Aye. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Um, go to discuss on whether to renew insurance for the building and property located at 218 Chestnut Plain Road, which is the, which is the school. center school. I don't know that we want to make, have an uninsured building, so I would think we would want to renew it, especially since we're in, uh, you know, doing people are doing urgent work. I don't, I mean, I don't see a, an advantage to not renewing it. And it would be if, if we were to not own the building anymore, the the insurance is prorated. So it's I would not, concur with Joyce on that. I don't, you know, it's yeah. okay. Do we need to vote? Yeah, vote would be good for. Okay. I will make a motion that we continue to uh, renew the insurance for the building and property located at 218 Chestnut Plain Road. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, now, time to sign warrants. I brought my yes. I brought my nice pen for this. So this is the election warrant for the primary election to be held on March 3rd, 2020. I believe those were otherwise known as the presidential primaries. I think it's from, well, I don't want to misquote, but I think it's from eight, so something. It, I think it, it says it, on there, actually. It, it, it might actually, actually says say 8 right a.m. to uh, 7 a.m. I got to believe it's 7, 7 a.m. Presidential primary. 7 a.m. today. Okay, presidential okay. primary, March 3rd, Tuesday, 8 p.m. is when we get in by 8 p.m. You can come as early as 7, and we also have early voting. We do. Um, the, not the week of the primary. It's the week before the primary. Um, and. The hours are whatever the town clerk's normal hours are. So the uh, town clerk's normal hours during the week of, as I pull it up, February 24th through the 28th. Um, and I may have the hours wrong, but I know if we have a town clerk here, she's going to take your vote. It's in the, um, if, if you go to your calendar, Joyce, yeah. it's already blocked off, so you could cite it there. I'm not in that calendar. Oh, okay. I don't really know how to get to that calendar. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't bring my. Well, you know what? I can. Let me yeah. see if I can take a quick candle. It's on. It's on Waitley.org. And it's on Waitley.org. Okay. On the yeah. calendar there, it's blocked off. Okay. So vote early. In case you, know, you want to avoid lines uh, on the third. It's an event. You go on election day, and it's exciting, and then you yeah. track the polls. Okay. So while John's looking that up, there's a lot of energy right here. <clears throat> the next item is early to voting is from eight fifth on the twenty fourth, eight fifteen to seven. That's early. Oh, long That's day. Early. The twenty fifth is eight fifteen to six. No, eight fifteen to four. Okay. The twenty sixth is eight fifteen to four. Mm -hmm. The twenty seventh is eight fifteen to four. four. And the twenty eighth is nine to twelve. Okay. That's Banker's hours on Friday, but the other days you've got a good... So you can go, go vote and then go to lunch. Right. Okay. Okay. Great. So uh, next item, discuss and vote to send a letter of support uh, of uh, uh, House Bill 1974, an act relative to municipal net metering facilities. Uh, and I'll, I'm, I'm hoping you can explain, well, explain that a little bit better my, than I can. Okay. Here's my understanding of it in the simplest terms. Um, when municipalities, um, ha small municipalities have small, smaller arrays than big municipalities, we all know that. So these small ones um, uh, end up getting uh, classified as a commercial rather than uh, uh, public. And I might have, I might be using the wrong terms there. Uh, private, 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 yeah. private instead of public, um, and they're clearly public, they're made by a municipality, but because they're under a certain size, they basically don't get the same net metering credits. And so if you're a big town with a big array, you get those net metering credits. If you're a small town and your array is smaller, and proportionally so, and reasonably so, you, you get classified as, as private. So this would change that. This would allow the smaller facilities to be counted um, as public and not private. 
and it's just something that our legislature, which, as you know, are very sensitive to small town issues, uh, overlooked apparently in their uh, uh, in their zeal to get the snap metering stuff done. So, I fully support signing it. And this is at their request. This is at the request of, of the town that is uh, initiated this legislation. So Windsor. Windsor, Windsor, Massachusetts. Oh, Windsor, they were here for the solar energy summons back in um, June of last year. And that's where I got most of my information on this. I'm, I'm fine with that. So I'll draft a letter and, and we'll have choice. Sign okay. it like board chair. Okay. Um, ooh, last item before the town administrator updates. Uh, to discuss and vote to accept the resignation of Megan Ashton from the Waitley Recreation Commission. Hey, if we don't vote to accept, it, she still have to be on? Well, because I, I can couple that with a nomination. Oh, okay. Take it away, John. Um, I would suggest that we thank Megan for several years of great service uh, okay. and that we... I'd sign that letter. Um, uh, nominate Shelly uh, Yagazinski, who is a mom okay. at Whitley Elementary School. Oh, excellent. Um, Does she want to do it? What's that? Does she want to do it? She th She's just finding out about this nomination now, so <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> she's a resident in town? Um, yes, she's she's great, and she's very eager to, to help out. So, Shelly? I can't pretend I could spell that. I, I will spell it for you. I will go to my... Okay. I, I cannot <laughs> pretend to have it memorized. <laughs> okay. Y-A-G, as in George, yeah. O, Mm -hmm. D is in David, Z, Insky. I N S K I. There you go. I was challenging you. Okay. <laughs> she's out of practice. Mm. Okay. Well, now that you spelled it. So that's the motion. Second no. We we may need this. To, I'll double check, but we may need mean, this as an agenda item, like a posted agenda item oh. to be able to nominate somebody. But I'll check. Oh. If not, we'll do it at the next meeting. Okay, so we we'll have before. Yeah, <laughs> it might be that. Are you become a rule follower? <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> okay, so first one, vote to accept the resignation and thank with a letter of some sort to Megan Ashman. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Um, those. Uh, uh, I heard a nomination of Shelly Agudinski. If, uh, if allowed. If if allowed. Yeah. Can do it, and, uh, and I will second work, that. We'll do it again. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and that may come up again. We may have to do that. All right, we're up to town administrative updates. Now Which there are none. Only seven. Now we'll get really bogged down. Oh, yeah, boy. okay. Um, so Williamsburg Road Bridge Project. Um, we had our site visit last week. Uh, we had 10, 10 different folks um, attend the site visit. I don't know if they were all general contractors. Some might have been some contractors. Um, so we had 10 we ex the bids for the project are due February 11th so we'll hopefully have a recommendation and cost for the next select board meeting on the 19th okay and hopefully that project will, will be set to go um, <coughs> I'm gonna, I, I want to jump back to the center school stuff. Um, so right, right before we leave that if, yep. if bids come in high the, we need uh, we're gonna need a warrant article to go through finance so, how does that fit in? The if schedule? the bids come in too high, it, it's an eligible Chapter 90 project. We'll have to decide what sources to look at. Or, it's town funding we could look at. Um, I know Keith, I think, was, was at least reserving a little bit of Chapter 90 funds. Okay. Um, but it, it's eligible for town funding, Chapter 90 funds. Okay. We'll have to. Cross that bridge when we get there. Okay. Yeah. Pun intended. The pun intended, right? Um, it was, I attended a regional IT meeting at at FERCOG this past couple days ago. Um, this came out of a, a previous sort of regional study of different towns that were interested in regionalizing their IT systems, and it's it's funded. I think it's funded through. Uh, Homeland Security money, which is looking at sort of the cybersecurity <coughs> aspect of it. Yeah. And uh, Mass, I think Mass IT is also contributing a little bit of a little bit of funding. Um, but it's just exploring whether it makes sense to, to regionalize some of the IT systems 
and service, well, and really services, systems, meaning hardware, software, and training and, and services, and to see if there's an economy of scale that, that works, and also to, to help, you know, smaller communities get to the level they need to in terms of cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. The company was, the company that's doing the assessment is called Novus. Um, they're out of East Hartford, and you know, Mass IT concurred in the statement, and I don't, I don't think it's self-serving, but they were mentioning that municipalities are becoming uh, more frequent targets of, yeah. of cybersecurity, whether it's ransomware mm -hmm. and things like that, where your, your, your data gets locked and you have to mm -hmm. pay a ransom to, right. um, to get it unlocked. And obviously there's, there's systems and, and ways around that, especially if you have Backup. You know, backup. Uh, yeah. You know, frequent backup, and you don't need to pay that right. money. But um, yeah. so that's that's just starting, and it, it, I think we're looking at least a year out in terms of when something would would happen. Yeah. But yeah. There's been a few uh, stories on the radio uh, about how this athletes are getting um, hit more just because they're generally more vulnerable. Yeah. Um, uh, in particular, the one thing it mentioned, and I don't know if this will come up. Um, but they were saying that having a having a website that was a .gov was somehow going to be better than having one that's like a .org or a .com, um, mostly because communications coming from it um, are more official. But I don't know that I really understood completely what the the reasoning was behind that. But if that comes up, I'd be interested to find out what's the um, if there's really better security if you've got a .gov yeah. or a .org, because it, well, it wasn't clear to me and the story went back pretty fast. Okay, yeah, I'll let you know if I hear, hear that. Um, and I, one thing we need to have on our radar is, and I don't know if, if one of you wants to become more involved in this, because it's a highly political, um, highly political group of people that meet, but and that's that's the Franklin Transportation Planning mm -hmm. Organization. And this is in relation to Haydenville Road, right? If, if they didn't, they, the problem is they meet in the middle of the day. They do. Yeah. They meet at noon. They meet at noon. And you get lunch. They do give you lunch. Yeah. Um, but it's the, it's the middle of the day, and yeah. and I'm hit or miss. So I, I just wasn't an effective representative, yeah. and it's important. Right. And I, I am almost always going to be a miss. Yeah, right. For a I guess we're looking for. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, anybody else? Well, I plan on going. No, I'm, I guess I'm available. Sure. Yeah. And Haydenville Road Project really is important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, if we remember what happened last year, it was it was on the tip the transportation improvement plan for federal funding for FY 2024, and there was uh, a motion made at the meeting to replace the Haydenville Road Project with the. Um, is it Wisdom Way that goes Somewhere, to yeah. the Greenfield fair, uh, the fairgrounds yeah. um, to replace the Haydenville Road project with the Wisdom Way project for you know all these sad reasons about you know it's terrible and it's going to cave in and it's going to you know it, it, it's way worse than Haydenville Road which may or may not be true. But, yeah, but Wisdom Way doesn't take any trucks. What happened is is doesn't go by a water supply. Yeah. Right, the Haydenville Road project got taken off. Yeah. The tip. So what happens? What happened was, it, it was also taken <coughs> off the uh, Mass DOT capital improvement plan uh, because they said there wasn't a there wasn't a certainty of funding. Mm -hmm. So, and that also meant that Mass DOT is less likely to push the design forward. You recall, there's millions of dollars that was. Uh, contained in a transportation bond bill for, for that project. Thus far, we've had them, you know, get us to 24.9% design. And Williamsburg is 25% now. Right, yeah, yeah, they're designing them together. And they're not willing to move that forward if there's no certainty of funding. Um, so because of the funding got taken out from, got taken out from the project, they're less likely to, to, yeah. to move it forward. So their recommendation is that we, <coughs> Once Haydenville Road gets back on the Franklin tip, is there going to mass DOT is more likely to move it from 25% to 50% design? So that's really the first step. Yeah. Um, was it a mistake to do this 
try to do this together. Because it seems to me, there are lots of roads that cross the boundaries between different Department of Transportation. I mean, it's not like there are no roads. Yeah, it, right. right. There's plenty of roads that cross, but do people just do those projects and stop at the boundaries because of the way these organizations work? So was it, I mean, was it a mistake to try and, and design this together? Is there something special about that road that means we really needed to design it together and, and climb all these other hurdles that we wouldn't have had to have otherwise? Uh, I don't think. And see, I would disagree with Brian. I think there is because without Williamsburg's involvement, you wouldn't have gotten Northampton's involvement and it wouldn't have been taken seriously. The reason that the Haydenville Road project is on anyone's radar screen is because of the Northampton water supply. If one Right, but wouldn't the, but wouldn't that be true if it were two separate projects? Yeah. I mean, I think Northampton would be involved because their their water supplies on the Waitley side of that. They weren't going to be Franklin involved without, without both towns involved. That that that's that's just the history of it. But it's still their water supply. But if, but if but if if only half of the access to the water supply from the road is taken care of and the other half isn't, they, they were less interested. Right. Well, then, then uh, anyway, I, I just think yeah, that makes sense. We, we I may have been, saying, yeah. we may have <clears throat> taken we, we may have made this mistake many years ago, yeah. and maybe we should think about next time because last time we redid Haydenville Road. It was six months later, and we're here talking about the next project because we know it's going to take 15 years to get the funding, right? So, so when we're here, yeah, I don't know, two years from now, <laughs> after Aidenville Road is redone, talking about the next time we're going to redo Aidenville Road, we might think about not doing it. I mean, as a as a cross border sort of thing. Yeah, that, you would think this is like Mexico on the other side. It, well, it's Mass Dot District One and Two. So uh, it is kind of like it's that. Kinda like, yeah, and then the it's, Mexico border. It, it separates the, the the federal, you know, MPO and TPO, the the Piner Valley, mm -hmm. uh, trans whatever metropolitan yeah. plan organization. Yeah. So we have different funding. We have different federal funding plans. We have different mass DOT districts. We have different counties. We have different towns. Um, mm. And it, pre it it presents it does present challenges in terms of construction funding as well. Yeah. Because there's, there's, there's a lot of competing demand for funds in the Piner Valley. Yep. Mm -hmm. in the, on the Piner Valley tip. You know, a town like Williamsburg is competing with Springfield, Northampton, Holyoke. Agawam, mm -hmm. Holyoke. I mean, you name it. That's yep. the, Granted, they get more money, but you're still competing with all those towns. So, yep. um, well, you get, they, I mean, I, I think they can get Northampton on their uh, side with the water supply thing. But, but anyway, I, I just yeah. bring that up as, as a something we can think about for next time. So Fred. So if Fred's interested, Fred. Yeah, I'll help you out. February 24th. Yeah. I'll, I'll send this to you, but February 24th is, yeah, is okay. sort of the first TPO meeting. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm on um, that okay. But I did reach out to the Mass DOT uh, Rich Massey to see where they are with the design. Um, I suspect it's probably where it has been for a little while, but which is about 24.9% design because mm -hmm. Mass DOT hasn't approved the 25% design. They're looking at alternatives for, for roadway width and environmental cons uh, environmental constraints. So, okay. so, but the the funding for if everything worked out, the funding, the funding on the on the Franklin tip wouldn't be till FY 2025. So, mm -hmm. okay. we're going to be here. So talking a little about, more than in two years. We're going to be here talking about Haydenville Road. Right. Okay. okay. Anything else? Um, Green Communities Grant application. Yes, Green Communities Grant. So that's that's due um, yeah, March 27th. <laughs> We're talking about the the elementary school energy improvements. Yeah. Um, I did just a day or two ago. I got. Um, cost estimates for the for the boiler and those types of things. Okay, good. Um, and for the roof? I reached out for weatherization vendors and I haven't been able to schedule anybody yet, but we'll do that. Um, we'll do that soon, but March is when we need to. And Frontier didn't have any that they use consistently. Yeah. So how much money Smith are we uses asking? Energia a lot. They're good. Who's that? Energia. That's who, I, that's who I contacted. Oh, okay. I haven't been able to get it. Oh, you can contacted somebody by the name of Tom. I'm going to use my name. Okay. How much money are we asking for? 
the the limit um, for green communities this year is two hundred thousand, and we won't come close to that okay. in terms of the request. Okay. That's your recollection too, isn't it, Nat? We'll see for the school. Sure. We won't hit two hundred thousand dollars with our request for the elementary school. No. No. Right. No. Yeah. Currently. Then what else should we be? And you can only ask for one item, though. I believe. Is so. there yeah? Is there other things you could ask for? Um, I mean, if we had, if we had other ideas that. Yeah, like does this building need weatherization? Could we look at this one? Um, we could. I mean, the challenge is we need the we need the, the analysis to show that it's gonna you know, pay out over the useful life of whatever the improvements are that you're doing. Or the library, or uh, well, the energy committee is pretty behind this this project. We, yeah, oh, know, well, I understand. Yeah. I'm not saying don't do the school, but if the school's not gonna cost two hundred thousand dollars, and we can ask for two hundred thousand dollars. Why don't we ask for more? Well, because you're not going to get two hundred thousand dollars. You you might be pricing yourselves out of competition. Oh, okay. You might you might be. That's just a risk that. Oh, you okay. Know. I see. Okay. Um. So in terms of the center school, I just wanted to touch on that. Back to center school. Oh, any concerns regarding train noise? Um. What are, what what is the board looking at? in terms of timing for a response in the center school committee. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I really talk about this a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, my understanding is that they're preparing, <coughs> they, so they did the survey, and they looked at the results. Is the survey closed or is it still open? It's closed, as far as I know. Pretty much closed, yeah. I think that they'll, yeah, they'll they take really whatever, if things. somebody else sub submits, they'll, they'll consider it, I guess, and okay. again. But. So I think they're they're looking about drafting a letter to, to the board. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and then they're sort of, uh, I don't want to presuppose what the letter says, but um, I think it's going to contain some recommendations and uh, maybe a request that to see if the board wants the committee to keep working at that something else. Um, Fred, you've been to more of the meetings than I have, yeah. but. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a suggestion of maybe putting it out for an RFQ, RFP? RFP, if anything. That's my yeah. understanding, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think that's, that, that's a no-brainer. Yeah, I mean, would anything that they have to recommend require town meeting action? So it sounds like probably. So if, if, if the town's going to, if RFQ. the town wants to dispose of the, dispose of the property, it requires <coughs> town meeting vote to do that. Yeah. And if there was to be some long-term lease arrangement recommended that exceeded uh, $35,000 would also require town meeting. So. Yeah, there was about 100, like 150 responses they got to the survey. Okay. And there, I guess, in a process of uh, assembling them and, and digesting and coming up with uh, conclusions on it, uh, what I've seen so far, I don't know if it's real, if one option is real uh, outstanding compared to others, mm -hmm. there's one part, it, it's kind of a mixed response all over the place. So I don't know what the, mm -hmm. the committee is going to recommend. I, I can't yeah. say, but I'm yeah. not a surprise that it's all over the map. Well, yeah, yeah I'm not surprised. Yeah. I mean, we couldn't. It's well, not well, like well, it's well, it's well, we could. Yeah. We could. Yeah, it's <laughs> we, uh, yeah. I'm sympathetic with the, the task that they're, you know, we're willing to give it a try. and. Uh, and okay, well, it sounds like then for timing, if they, if something's going to require a town meeting vote, I mean, to get it on the board, it's got to be like sometime, like very beginning of April, we've got to have the wording and to approve and sign, um, yeah, sign off on that sometime in like the first two weeks of April, right? ish. Yeah. Um, um, so to really make the decision, you know, it's, it's March, really. yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. So, so it seems like. End of January, so I would within February is still pushing it, but <coughs> if they can okay. give us a heads up within February then, or really early March. The desire is still, yeah, time to if we want to do something at town meeting to have, yeah, it. If, yeah. If we if we actually send something to town meeting, then you know, our meeting in March is, is what yeah. middle of the month, right? Something, but but I also think that we should be prepared to say maybe a town meeting is like, hey, these are the right. 
and let that be a time to get um, feedback. It might be that you know the if something tends to happen really fast, sometimes people just go, "Whoa, that's too fast," and vote against it just because it's too fast. So we should be ready for that as well, and, and that's understandable. Yeah. It might be there's more time needed for getting information out. Um, the the twenty. Sixth is the next scoop deadline, and that's the last scoop before town meeting. So, if they, so if, yeah, February 26th would be the deadline. Well, I guess we need to the 27th. The uh, scoop, up, yeah, February 26th. The, part, the scoop will come out the following week. Um, so, if they want to put something in summarizing their work, that would be a good way to get some education out there on what people have considered and. Um, and, and why they're recommending the things they might be recommending. Okay. Judy's involved in that, right? In your scoop thing. Is, is she part of your group? No? Uh, well, she's a contributor. Contributor. Yeah. Okay. Well, she's on the committee, so. Yeah. yeah so she's aware of that. Yeah. Okay. 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 And I'm just going to throw out with cold weather here, ice will be freezing. Um, and if people haven't noticed, there is a hockey rink between the fire station and the highway garage. Uh, we are looking for volunteers who will maintain it. Uh, it, it. It does need to be cleared once in a while. The fire department is going to be great in, in putting some warm water over it to, create, to, to maintain that smooth ice. But if there is a snowfall, if there is, you know, get, get in touch with, with, uh, with people to say, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help shovel it off or because otherwise the ice will get bad real fast. And, yeah, yeah. and it's a nice asset that the town has now. Yeah. Um, we're not playing hockey rink, hockey games on it, but you know, working That's on nice. that double axle okay. and the uh, the triple saw cow. Okay. Is it open to non-residents? We're, we're in, employees we're, maybe? We are yeah, children. We are we are inclusive. Okay. We we are welcoming. There you go. So yes, bring your children. How much how much for kids? It is Do free. we have them? No. Are we requiring kids to wear helmets? We are not requiring anything. We are not going to parent. <laughs> if people would like to parent their own children, we welcome that. Right. All right. You had one last item? Oh, there's, there was just oh, an sorry. email uh, complaint about um, the increased train horn noise mm. with the uh, I more frequent, more yeah, frequent more trains. Frequent. Uh, Trains, yeah. I just wanted to share that with you that we have. <coughs> okay. Well, there's no question that you're going to hear that in the winter time more than this, than, than when foliage is out. So Probably. I'm not sure what can be done well, about it. Yeah, I'm not sure it's in our lab to do place? anything about Sorry. it, but I can well, sympathize with. Oh sure. Because yeah. um, I hear it more too, and I'm yeah. it's, I'm not I'm probably nowhere near as close as these folks are. But Plus, the new service started yeah. when, uh, in the fall. Okay. So in, in the fall, yeah, but I think they're more concerned about middle of the night. Right, but, that's my guess. Guess. but it increased more in the yeah. fall time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Call. And you know, and the yeah. plan is for it to continue to increase. I mean, their goal is to not have the riders Hopefully. decrease. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, we'll see. Maybe, maybe a letter. But maybe not middle of the night traffic increasing. I think having more uh, commuter uh, hours. Ideally, right. 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 Not, I mean, it, you know, so Brian, a, a letter never hurts. Just saying, it, it, can we work together? They may they may respond saying that our hands are tied. But at least they know that we're eager to collaborate and partner with them on a solution for our residents, if, if at all possible. So a letter to them would be, would be, I think, make a lot of sense. Okay. I have two, two items to bring up real quick. Uh, one is, is uh, police department patrols. Uh, you know, we're hearing comments in the center of town, of people speeding and, uh, and the truck noise and all. I guess I don't see. I don't see. Of course, I'm not there every day and don't drive on Chestnut Plain. Increase police presence to to deter this activity. But I see our police patrolling State Road Five, several locations in the evenings, especially. And I'm wondering, is that what they should be doing? They should be on Chestnut Plain somewhere. Now maybe that's not a high priority time for Chestnut Plain, or they already were there. I can't say that, but. But uh, I see them a lot on, on State Road, whether it's down by Tom's Hot Dog 
whether it's down by uh, DeMille's property or by the even the truck stop. Patrolling State Road, what, why? Yeah, maybe it does It does impact traffic and on Waitley yeah, Roads, maybe, but, but they should meters. maybe focus some more on Chestnut Plain. People are complaining that's where issues are, not State Road. Yeah, because State Police will also cover State yeah. Road once in a while. Yeah. Um, they, they have a schedule, obviously. Yeah, right. I, I do see them at, in the town hall parking lot well, and okay, in the maybe, center yeah. school parking lot because I, you, I travel that more. on a daily right. basis. Yeah. Right, I, right. I, and I have I have on more than one occasion right. seen them uh, but, patrolling but, up there. But I also see them on 510. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's I, true. I, I, I just think that yeah, maybe too yeah. much. The, the other no. thing. Um, oh, let us know. Can, 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 can I put you on pause there? Because it's the same subject. Chris. Yeah, just for the record, I do see them quite a bit on Chestnut Plain Road, various spots more frequently. I've seen them at the center school, I've seen them at the town hall, I've seen them down on the other end, more towards Westbrook. Um, you know, how often, I'm not sure, but they're there quite a bit. Okay, well, I don't yeah. go through. People will complain about anything, so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The other thing that's come to mind, and more recently, is the other the other night meeting, was uh, Tritown Beach. Uh, <laughs> Brian did a, it's kind of a uh, inspection of it during the summer, uh, problems, issues yeah. that were there. And I've heard, and I guess I forgot about it for a while, a couple of people have mentioned to me, uh, what are we doing with it, maintaining it? And, and somebody the other night at our meeting, I don't think they were even a resident, asked what's happening with Tritown Beach as far as keeping it open and making improvements and, uh, and it, they kind of mentioned, well, this should be an asset the town should be promoting, and and we don't <laughs> see that. It's either it's an asset or a liability, and and I, I don't know which it is. If it's an asset, then then we should be focusing more attention on it. And I I told them, well, I'll contact the uh, the Tri Town Beach what, committee or commission, whatever whoever's on there. I says that's a start if you if you're concerned. It's part of our recreation economy. Yeah, no, I, I I I would I would say stay tuned. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, but maybe for Brian's information, a, a budget hearing is coming up to see what this committee is doing, if anything, about maintaining at least what's there or or improvements, uh, and and to consider whether we want to. Do more, more advertising, making it more of an asset to the town rather than just if let I it go. Jump, if let I can jump in, yeah. I, when I said stay tuned, yeah, I, I, I mean stay tuned. There, Is it a rec committee going to be involved? Or? I, stay tuned. Okay. I, I would prefer to keep my cards somewhat well, close. Okay, to at least to the somebody's match. looking at. Oh, it. oh, absolutely. It's okay. twenty minutes to eight for a meeting that was supposed to end at six thirty. Right. Okay, okay. So at least somebody's. Yeah. Looking no, at it. we are taking a strong look at it. Okay. Well, that's good. Is to it hear. an immediate fix? Like tomorrow? No, no, no. but no, we are taking a very hard look okay. at it. Very okay. seriously. Because yeah. yeah. there is people so coming. Yeah. yeah. No, it's. Yeah. I'm one of them. And okay. and the, your language sounded like my language. So yeah. someone's been listening to me because I'm original. Yeah. Okay. It's a decent <laughs> office, isn't it? All right. It's a decent office. Okay, fine. I'll sign anything. Let's get out. certify that we have the air transfer station in oh. accordance with our permits. Is yeah. there a motion to adjourn? Second. <laughs> all right. All in favor. All right. Good night. Good luck. Good night, everybody.